change the headmaster control on this walking cooler. One of the things I've been wanting to mention lately is how fast you can get things done with a 3 8 hose. You know, we've been talking about the big blue hoses. 3 8 for recovery makes an unbelievable difference. A lot of cool new tools and toys and stuff like that. Makes the job quicker, easier. I don't use these for vacuum anymore. They're dedicated for recovery. We're gonna pull right off the receiver. One of the things, I couldn't find AK's bucket lid thing. They don't make it no more. So, found this one by Plano. You can pull it out. Put your stuff in there like that. You got your other hose here. Extension and some extra little stubs and an extra rag. So we're gonna pull a quick vac on this uh, recovery cylinder. This will get us at an angle so we can see what we got going on. 20 pounds in there, that's about what this thing holds. This regulator is awesome, made by Western. Cool thing about this one here, it's a 250 pound one. Um, they've got 500 and a 650, I think it is. But basically, when you have it on, you've got off, braze, purge, and test. Test will take you up to 250 for this particular model. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get that thing cut out of there. Okay, put her down to a purge. I think we're just gonna go ahead and take this apart there and put a whole new 90 on it. It's just gonna be easier. Here's a new one. That's all machine threaded. I'm not going to take a chance. We're just going to take it apart. That is the awesome thing about the Baco wrenches. They're really thin and they're nice and wide. And it's just got to come into the bottom. To me, it's just easier if we can do some of this external of the unit so we're not trying to raise uphill. Make it easier, work smarter, not harder. But as you see, the sticker did not get damaged, 250 degrees, so it did not hurt it, which is a good thing. So condensers come in the bottom, discharge on the left, and receiver on the right. As far as getting our nitrogen through, there is no valves. So unfortunately, you can work your way backwards through the receiver here. Let's go ahead and put our wet rag down here to catch any drippage. So I'm thinking ding and ding. easier they say you don't have to do that but I'm gonna tell you right now that made it a whole lot easier that will match up to that all right our battery went dead so didn't uh, get all that like I thought I did but uh, we went ahead and sprayed all of our fittings including our head we put the uh, pin back in there the push rod and snugged her up but that's what we got right now. We, uh, I don't think, I don't know if it caught it on video or not, but if it did, great. We uh, preheated the end of the copper and then uh, used the uh, power switch. Made that fitting right there. One less fitting to have to stock. Only one solder joint. 
Got two 90s in there, cleared her up, brought her through there. We used some paste on there along with a wet rag. And uh, right now we're under pressure test. Gonna pull a vacuum on it and uh, get her restarted. The reason why we're using the valves with this is so that we can valve it off, do our decay test, make sure it holds. You know what? Not gonna be able to get that in there. That sucks. Well, you know what? Uh, it's not a perfect world. There we go. That is not how I'd like to do it, but it's how we're gonna do it. Like I said, don't have a whole lot of options here. They have a fancy fitting at True Tech Tools you can get. I don't need it that often. And I think it was rather expensive. We got our gas ballast open. And uh, she's starting to uh, her pull down. Okay, almost two minutes, 40 seconds into it. We're just now finally starting to drop. So there's definitely, you know, leftover refrigerate, uh, refrigerant in the uh, oil. So it's going to take a little bit to pull down. We're going kind of quick, though. And everything is the way it should be. So receiver, condenser, and discharge. We're gonna fill this up uh, with our 3 8 lime. It's gonna transfer a little bit of uh, liquid kind of quick. We're dumping that right into the receiver. All right, we're at 11 pounds already. Check our time clock. Make sure it ain't all out of whack now that we've had the power off for a little while. These are a little weird. They got a slow start on them, a bump start they call it. It'll run for a couple seconds, stop, run for a couple seconds, stop. Okay, we got her charging in there. Wait until we get solid. Then we'll add 10% to the total charge. Right now we're 14 pounds, so 10 to 15% over that would be your winter charge. That's right in your books. All right, got us a new filter dryer in there. And I had to put a T in there so I could pull a vac on it because it's missing the traditional valves that are normally out here. So got that there. Valves feeding correctly through the bottom out to the side, nothing coming through. Uh, just had to add a little extra yet and then uh, that should wrap this one up all right now that we're off site we can take a look at this valve all right so we have our discharge our condenser and our receiver the condenser which is your liquid coming in through the bottom here it's going to come out and go to the receiver um, generally when everything's working properly we're at normal ambient temperatures uh, you know and we're above say the 180 pressure mark well, in this instance right now, uh, the bulb was cut. When that was cut, it let the push rod here come forward, the spring and the uh, cap inside here all come forward and will now allow the condenser to go to the receiver. So if you cut it, you're gonna bypass this device as if it wasn't in the circuit at all. So inside here, we've got a diaphragm, just like a TXV, it's pressurized. So there's that. Then like we seen earlier, here's the push rod. That comes right to there. And then if you open up the rest of it, we've got a spring. And we've got a piece of metal here that basically acts as a valve. That spring just goes in the bottom of that uh, brass piece there, so it just sets there. This is not rocket science. This is just machine thread. There's nothing special sealing it other than a perfect, nice machine thread. So we've got the th spring drops into there. This here, you can see it's nicely machined. You've got it. The other side's nice and flat. It fits right on top of there perfectly. If you look at that, boom, boom. So it sets there like that. That's gonna go inside the body here. The body's got a nice machine spot there. You can see right here off to the right, that is your receiver. So the gas is gonna come in through the condenser port out on the receiver. With the spring like it is now, nothing pushing against it, that is going to allow the refrigerant to come 
right through and out. But under normal circumstances, this diaphragm is going to work. The rod here is pushed down by the head. The head will push that spring down. I would assume that this is probably 180 pounds of pressure in there. Anything below 180, it's going to cause it to start bypassing. Anything above it, it's going to be wide open. So generally, you got 180 plus going through here. You're going to go straight on through. If it's below 180, it's going to push down. It's going to start letting the discharge gas come through and bleed through. Um, if you used to blow through it right, right now, you can hear that, that it's coming right through. But that's with the diaphragm busted. If it was pushed in, we'll push on that and I will blow through the other one. I'm gonna push on it like this. You can see it start to move. You'll hear the difference in the air going through. That's just me pushing on the actual spring down there and it's letting it go through. So, that's all there is to this thing. There's not a lot to it. It's, uh, you know, the spring and stuff's all calculated out. Same thing with the diaphragm. Uh, I would think you could easily tear it apart and clean it and put it back together, but generally we ain't got time for it if it didn't work to take it all back apart again for a second time. Uh, when I took this apart uh, in the video, there wasn't a whole lot in here to be damaged. When I soldered it in place, uh, it was just my own personal preference. Everything worked just fine. But uh, like I said, here's that uh, piece of metal there. You can see the other side there is machined out. Boom. That push rod, as I'm calling it, fits right there. You can see the groove. It actually is grooved enough it'll actually hold it. So, And that just pushes up and down based off of the diaphragm. There we go. That's it.